Welcome to AOPA Expo 2008. I'm Rob Finfrock, Aero News Managing Editor, and this morning at San Jose, California for AOPA Expo 2008. We're standing under the wing of a beautiful Cessna 210 Centurion, and I think you'll find that there's a little, the beauty's a little more than skin deep on this aircraft. Grant, why don't you tell us a little bit about the modifications that you've made to this airplane? Well, we took, uh, this happens to be a 1977 airframe. Uh, we've loved the 210 for many years, and uh, it, Cessna's not manufacturing them anymore, so we took this down to the airframe, and uh, we put in a, uh, uh, a new uh, ram engine with a cemetery prop. Uh, we went through the complete interior paint, and new model, put a new oxygen uh, system into it, complete new airflow and gaspers, uh, heavy uh, uh, noise canceling and uh, noise attenuation system as well as um, uh, a lot of um, weighted uh, noise suppression equipment. So it's a real quiet, uh, real beautiful airplane. And then we finished it all with uh, a major uh, cockpit uh, refurb, which is the first all-glass uh, 210 cockpit in the world, we believe. <laughs> and we're going to market it as a uh, Crown Air uh, Centurion edition of the, of the T210. Let's say I have a Centurion of this year. It's a little tired. It's been handed down to me. It's been put away wet more than a few times. I bring my plane to you for a complete refurbishment. Where do you start? Where do you start? Let's just start at the nose and walk me through the general process of what it takes to create a Centurion Edition aircraft. Well, the first thing that's important is that we, we completely dismantle the aircraft right down to the airframe. And then we take all of the existing systems that are retained, the, the gear system, we completely overhaul that, the fuel system, we completely overhaul that. And then we begin the process, all of cor the corrosion inspection and treatment, if, if any, is uh, uh, there. Then we completely redo the wingtips off the aircraft, new lighting systems. We put a new engine, the ram engine, into it, with, uh, again, with the scimitar prop, which gives us uh, extra power on, and, on climb. Uh, and then we, of course, begin the process of the uh, full removal of all the wiring systems to install a brand new avionics uh, panel. Uh, meanwhile, the interior is, is out for uh, refurb and, and uh, we refabricate uh, all, a lot of the panels. We've taken all of the old um, um, circuit breaker panels and just cleaned it all up, relocated switches where in the older aircraft they weren't easily accessible, what have you. And so we, it's, a, it's a whole flat panel now as opposed to some of the curved panels, uh, previous Cessnas. Uh, and uh, at the end of the day, it's a premium aircraft. It's a brand new aircraft. If Cessna was going to make the 210 today, I think this is what it would look like. Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single-engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect including the Cirrus Airframe Parachute System. With its detailed design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly, to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at CirrusDesign.com. What kind of market are you seeking? Obviously, existing 210 owners, are you also hoping that somebody who might be looking at a $300,000 composite aircraft might swing down your way and take a look and be pleasantly surprised by what they see in a older but very established airframe? Right. We've, we've tried to build an aircraft that will compete with uh, Bonanza, the, the uh, Piper Saratoga, as well as the new Cessna 400s and the Cirrus aircraft. I mean, that's really, it's a six-passenger airplane that competes with uh, the, th the three six-passenger airplanes and the two four-passenger airplanes, kind of what we zeroed in on. Because there, there is a really good market, as proved by those manufacturers, for uh, new aircraft. And we believe that this airframe was so comfortable uh, and handled so well that when we do the changes, make the changes to this airplane, uh, it is a competitively, it's a 2008 Centurion Edition aircraft. And that's what we're hoping to try to present and, and produce. And obviously, I have to ask you, what kind of money are we talking about to have a plane look as good as this one? Basically, it's with whatever, we'll, we'll go out and get an airframe for a customer, or the airframe, or the customer can bring us an airframe, and we'll completely redo the whole airplane for three, $365,000. That includes everything, paint, interior, engines, overhaul, cockpit. So 
you know, with a with a hundred thousand dollar airframe, you're out the door at uh, four sixty five, which is a hundred hundred fifty thousand dollars less than a new airplane in most cases. With with the things that are in this, when you consider what we have actually installed in the airplane. And speaking about a particular piece of equipment that you have installed in this aircraft, I mentioned to you before our interview, I couldn't get over when I first saw the panel. Why don't you walk me through the glass cockpit suite that's in this aircraft? Uh, well, basically, it's, we start with the Avidyne uh, dual 10-inch uh, screens, the MFD and the PFD. And uh, I was uh, quite pleasantly surprised at the clarity and the, and the ease of use of that product. We were very, very excited about it. We just got our, really our first flight in the airplane three days ago. And it was totally intuitive and, uh, and, and very functional. And so we were, we're very excited that that was the one we chose for this particular mod. Uh, we also have the EDM 900 in there, and I happen to be a guy that likes to have the engine instruments independent. And the, the EDM 900 is absolutely a beautiful instrument and uh, uh, gives you everything you want to know about, everything from engine uh, monitoring equipment to fuel, oil, and other, other pressure systems. So that was, that was excellent. We have a full Garmin stack with the 530 and the 430, as well as the dual, tran dual transponders and the STEC 55 um, autopilot. And obviously, this is an STC process. Where are you in that process as far as being able to offer this airplane to customers in an STC configuration? Uh, we, by the time this goes to air, I, we're, we're three or four days away from finalists. We've done every, everything's completed. We just need our final test flight. Uh, we'd, we'd actually conducted the test flight, picked up a few squawks, and we've refinished those. We needed to bring it to the show, so we did an experimental. We'll return it, and next Friday we'll do the uh, final test flight and sign-offs. So, we, so by the time we take orders, we'll be able to deliver. You've heard of this thing called WAS, right? The Wide Area Augmentation System lets you fly GPS glide path approaches without relying on ground-based landing aids. No VOR, no ILS, no problem. Fact is, WAS is so smart, it even knows what you're going to say next time you need it. And don't have it on board. Wah, wah, I want my WAS now! I was really crying there for a second. We're uh, two days into the show as we record this. How has market response been so far? Well, I've been unbelievably pleased. Uh, uh, whether they want to buy one or not, they all love it. So uh, we think, you know, we've got, we think we've got, you know, maybe one or two customers that we, uh, in the first two days of the show, that we think we'll, uh, we'll be able to go forward with. Um, but everyone, without exception, has just said, "Well, that's just a, that's just a beautiful airplane." So, if nothing else, our egos uh, uh, polished up real good. <laughs> now, this is obviously a flagship product for your company. But why don't you tell us a little bit about what else Crown Air Aviation does? Well, Crown Air is we have three uh, primary locations. We're in Montgomery Field uh, for where we handle mostly light aircraft, King Airs, light jets. Uh, both maintenance and avionics installations, as well as our FBO facility there. Carlsbad, we have a 20,000 acre facility, uh, excuse me, 20,000 square foot uh, facility there for avi avionics and maintenance, and we do mostly Hawker and, uh, and mid-sized jets. And then finally we acquired uh, IFR Avionics at Van Nuys, uh, along with Royd West Maintenance, so we do uh, Gulfstream level. Uh, and uh, uh, Hawker and, uh, and Challenger aircraft there for maintenance and avionics. We, we just completed a, a, f a, a four-tube glass cockpit for the G2, 3, G2 and 3s there, and we also will finish up in the next month a five-tube EFIS cockpit for the Falcon 50. So we'll have those two, two STCs as well. Well, I must say, that experience obviously shows in this aircraft because this certainly is not my father's Centurion. Grant, thank you so much for your time.